In today's video, we're going to talk about how to calculate a break-even analysis. Uh, two things to note. One, this video will be a little longer than usual since we'll go through this in, uh, in detail. Uh, two, uh, the, uh, the how to calculate a break-even analysis is, uh, is included in the strategy analytics memo, including a worksheet that goes through the data that we'll be seeing here. So if you have any questions, uh, you can refer to the memo and the worksheet to, uh, to dig in. Okay, so first of all, uh, what is a break-even analysis? And we're going to um, illustrate this with data from uh, Carnival 2002 uh, from the Carnival case. So basically what a break-even analysis is doing is just first saying, what are our fixed costs? What are the costs that we bear regardless of how many passengers we carry, for instance, in the Carnival case? And then we say, okay, having established that, what is our contribution margin? And the contribution margin is uh, how much cash, incremental cash, we're generating per uh, additional passenger, okay? And so that is essentially the price that you're charging, so how much revenue you're generating per uh, additional passenger minus the variable cost associated with that passenger, okay? But the cost that you incur if and only if a new passenger comes on board. And so what this allows us to calculate is the point at which our contribution margin covers our fixed cost. That's the break-even point that gives the chart its name. Uh, prior to this point, of course, we're losing cash in the sense, or losing money in the sense that we are not generating enough incremental contribution margin to cover our fixed costs. And after the break-even point, we're making money in the sense that our uh, the incremental cash that we're generating from our passengers is uh, enough to cover our fixed costs and then some. Okay, so this is this is the essence of a break-even analysis. So how do we uh, calculate this? The first thing you need to do is think about how are you going to measure volume, the horizontal axis. Uh, one way to do this is by customer. So you might look at revenue per customer per year uh, and then calculating the, um, uh, the uh, contribution margin. You also look at the variable costs per customer per year. Uh, examples might be Trader Joe's or Coca-Cola. Uh, this is useful when you have customers who buy a lot of your product multiple times over the course of a year. Um, and so in the context of uh, Carnival, if we chose this uh, way to measure volume, we take cruise plus onboard revenues per customer per year. Okay, so that's one way to measure uh, volume. Uh, another way to measure volume is by units sold. So instead of uh, revenue per customer, we look at revenue per unit sold, you know, how much uh, revenue Tesla generates for every car it sells, for instance, and then variable costs again, of course, we are, are calculating per unit sold. Uh, this approach is particularly helpful for infrequent large ticket purchases, you know, buying a car, Tesla, buying an air, you know, an airline, buying an, uh, an aircraft at, from Boeing. Uh, and so in the case of Carnival, if we were going with this approach, which we will, it, you would take cruise plus onboard revenues per passenger cruise day. So our denominator here is going to be passenger cruise day. Uh, and that's what we'll use going forward. OK, so once we've decided on that, then what we're going to do is try to find the generators of cash and the, uh, the, the uses of cash uh, to calculate our uh, break-even chart, okay? And so most of these are coming from the income statement. Uh, and indeed, some people will calculate break-even looking only at income statement items. It's not quite right. You're actually, a more refined analysis is looking at all the uh, variable contribution uh, margin, all the cash that's generated uh, from your contribution margin, and all of your fixed costs, including uh, cash costs that might not show up on the income statement. Uh, and so you want to, uh, if you follow that approach, you need to take into account things like uh, uh, capital expenditure, purchase of property and equipment, and change in operating uh, uh, and working capital. So again, sometimes people calculate on the income statement alone. Uh, that's not wrong, but it, it, it's, it's really better to uh, calculate using your, everything that's driving your cash flow. It gives you a fuller picture of, um, of the economics of your break even. Uh, and if you do, if you do um, focus on cash flow as opposed to profits only, then you need to include things like capital expenditure and change in working capital, which we've, we've done in this chart. Okay, great. So now we've established what are the sources and uses of cash. The next thing we're going to do is estimate what percentage of each of those sources and uses of cash is fixed. Um, and so what we're doing here is simply saying, okay, what percentage from zero to 100 of each line item 
is fixed. So our passenger ticket revenue, 0% is fixed, right? We only get that revenue if we get a new customer. And so that's not fixed. You know, if we look at uh, payroll and related expenses, that's essentially 100% fixed, right? So you've, whether you have one passenger on the ship or the ship is full, you need to have the staff, you need the captain, you need the crew. So that those costs don't vary based on the number of um, passenger cruise days that you sell. Uh, and then again, again, it's useful to note what any assumptions that you're making just for your own uh, sake to remember what you did. And also if you're uh, sharing the document, communicating your analysis to other people. Okay, so once we've uh, calculated the percentage fixed cost, then we convert it back to uh, absolute dollar values. Okay, so all we're doing here is we're saying, okay, what percentage of, uh, we've got 3.3 uh, 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 billion is uh, in passenger ticket revenues, 0% of that is fixed. So we have $0 that are fixed passenger ticket revenues and 3.3 uh, billion uh, variable. And then, you know, similarly, if we look at uh, onboard and other expenses, we're assuming they're 100% fixed. So, you know, we've got 116 million worth of those expenses, 116 million of those are fixed and, and none of those are variable and so forth. So all we're doing is just uh, converting back to absolute dollar values. Uh, and this is uh, uh, useful right off the bat because what it gives us is our our total fixed cost, 3.3 uh, billion, which will, uh, you know, create that horizontal fixed cost line when we get to the chart. Okay, then uh, the other thing we want to do is calculate contribution margin. Uh, and so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the variable portion of both our revenues and costs and convert them from absolute dollars to uh, per units. So in this case, we're dividing the absolute dollars by uh, the passenger cruise days to come up with a uh, variable uh, a contribution margin per passenger cruise day. Okay, so we have, for instance, $194 worth of revenue per passenger cruise day. Then we've got to reduce, uh, we've got to deduct some costs that we incur uh, per passenger cruise day, the variable portion of our costs, and we net out at um, $157 per passenger cruise day as our contribution margin. So that's how much cash we're generating with every incremental uh, passenger cruise day. Great. Uh, and at this point, we have everything we need to construct our break-even chart. So uh, what we're doing is we're just listing, you know, various levels of uh, volume, in this case, passenger cruise days, uh, millions. Uh, we're taking our contribution margin and multiplying by, by that. Uh, and then, of course, our fixed costs are fixed. And so what this gives us is, you know, again, our $3.3 billion worth of fixed costs doesn't vary depending on the number of passenger cruise days. Here's the contribution margin, and we see we break even at something looks like about 19 or 20 uh, million passengers. This is the point at which we break even. And, and that's, that's it. That's all we need to do. Um, so uh, on the break-even analysis, a couple of concluding thoughts. It, it's a very useful tool to model the impact of market changes. You know, you've got a price war, you've got falling demand on a company's economics, and to communicate those changes uh, to an audience in a visually uh, intuitive manner. It's a very easy chart to digest, and it really helps to understand how choices you've made that might drive your fixed costs up or down or make it easier or harder to get volume or trade off variable uh, contribution margin versus volume, how they play out in an interactive fashion. So it's, um, it's a very useful tool for both analysis, scenario planning, and communication. Um, again, our bias is going to be to calculate it for cash flows rather than just profits, uh, since really the analysis you want to get at is your uh, cash break even rather than your accounting break even. Um, you, you might decide to use the average of recent years rather than the terminal year. So for instance, with our capital expenditure, uh, if it jumped up uh, year on year, we might have said, oh, let's take the last five years average and uh, use that to calculate our, uh, as an input to our analysis rather than the terminal year. Perfectly fine. Uh, it can be quite sensible. Uh, and when you're estimating the percentage fixed, uh, among each line item uh, in, in terms of the uh, sources and uses of cash, you'll want to look at the notes and the financial statements to understand what's going into those line items. It, it, you may, it may not be obvious or ask somebody who's an expert, either they know the industry or they're an accountant very familiar with how, this, um, uh, how these line items are constructed. Also, again, helpful to, um, to note your assumptions so that you remember what you did and when you're communicating to other people, they understand how you came to the conclusions you came to as well.